It's just, um, late, late um, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. And we're, we're actually on air, so that's great. So welcome to everybody to another episode of Leadership on Air with my good friend Walter over in uh, Palo Alto and my uh, humble self here back in Australia at the moment. Going out to you live via YouTube, QG Plus, Sunsu, uh, Cleverex and The Rising. And today we're going to be talking about the magic of storytelling. Um, Walter, you want to go take it away? I mean, for me, all good leaders tell good stories and that's sort of what one of the things that makes them a great leader is because they have good stories to tell, which demonstrate great, great um, um, uh, examples or whatever it is they want to tell, they want to disseminate to people. So instead of getting up and you know, lecturing people on all these bullet points, they tell them a story, and it's because they have had that experience that they can do that. So tell us, mate, what's your what's your take on this? Well, first, uh, hello everybody, and uh, hello from Palo Alto. Sunny Palo Alto. I don't tell you the temperature, but it's more like uh, like last week. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's go to the storytelling and to the magic of storytelling. Uh, when you when when you look into history, into history of mankind, then you you will find out that uh, human beings are storytellers, tell us by nature. Uh, even way back then, uh, during the times of the cavemen, uh, what did they do in their cave? They were telling each other stories. And uh, when you look into how our brains are wired, this is actually how we get and process information. We need, we have the need to, to listen to stories in order to understand. And uh, it's just not working the way uh, that you come as a leader and you tell them, okay, uh, let's do A, B, C, and, and you, you basically come out of nowhere and telling them that. Uh, and after the fact, you wonder why it's not being done. So they people need this context of the story, what this is all about, and uh, well, uh, pretty much when uh, when when you say magic, uh, uh, you remember the fairy tale One Thousand and One Nights when Sherazade is actually uh, uh, telling her stories to the to the caliph or what, what the title was to this guy, and that is a very good example what you can do by stories, how you can actually get into or tap into the mind of another person and make the or have the other person understand what uh, what, what you are doing, uh, where, where you are coming from. And uh, stories is the point. Look at people, here's a question. When you, when you look at Martin Luther King and at this speech, I have a dream, or uh, at JFK going to the moon, or at people like uh, Mandela or Mahatma Gandhi, what do they have in common? They, oh, there was a question to me. I thought <laughs> that was rhetorical. Yeah. What do they have in common? Question mark. <laughs> question mark, right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they, they're, both, they're both telling a story of what they believe is possible and what can be achieved. Very important point. They do not use PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, good point. <laughs> they do not use PowerPoint. They get their message across in their story. They don't need that. And I'm remembering there was uh, there was one big meeting at the Volkswagen Group in the PSK, which is the Product Strategy Committee. And uh, back then, uh, president was of course the CEO, uh, Dr. Pierre himself, and sitting all there. And then all these people are coming in with tons of charts and presenting their stuff. And Dr. Pierre is a guy he gets easily tired and bored, especially by charts. So uh, they come. Some of them bring literally a hundred charts or so uh, to present their stuff and, and usually you have, if much, you have 10 to 15 minutes to, to talk about uh, this guy is busy and, and the whole PSK is busy. So it, we, are, we are approaching lunchtime and uh, a young guy appears, brilliant young guy about in his early 30s and Dr. P looks at him and says, okay, how many charts do you bring? And the guy turns over to Dr. Peek and says, none, I know my stuff. And then he came up with a brilliant presentation, actually in, in form of a story, less than 10 minutes and got everything approved. Uh, yeah. Six months from that, uh, from that point, uh, he was promoted to board member at, uh, at Skoda in Prague. 
because uh, it was just amazing the way he was able via his stories to get the points across. He usually didn't use any chart, mm. and, and uh, that was that uh, that was so compelling. The story uh, he he was uh, he was talking about. It's kind of often I think it's a little bit like like dating. Uh, when when you when you date the first time. Uh, you're better off tell a story, and and that's actually what everybody does, telling <laughs> telling stories. If you would just come uh, uh, flat out uh, with a, putting the facts on the table and said, "Hey, uh, this is what we are going to do," and you know, right now uh, um, maybe we split lunch, uh, we don't know each other uh, that well uh, yet, and uh, after the fact uh, we'll figure out uh, your place or mine. Uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's simply not going to work. You 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 gotta uh, tell. You gotta tell. I think, uh, I think I think we've all been to those present. You're absolutely right. Uh, and I I quite often um, I quite often compare dating a business to dating. There are so many analogies there. It's like you know um, on on be, people when they first interact, whether it's in business or on a, on a date, the, the best you're ever going to treat somebody or be treated by somebody more to the point is on your first date. Uh, and so I often look at um, the way I'm treated in, in business and I think, well, if that's the way you treat me on our first interaction, that's as good as it's going to get. It's not going to get any better. Uh, back, to, back to the storytelling though. I think we've all been to those presentations, those situations where we've seen someone either, uh, they have multiple people off one and then they tell a bit and they read off another and they tell a bit and they read off another one, or they just completely read the, the PowerPoints or some damn thing, or they have handout notes. And we've been to those presentations where people know their stuff, uh, and they do, like you say, they just they tell the story around the stuff. They may they may have a you know a PowerPoint behind it, but there are no bullet points there. They're mostly just pictures yeah. <laughs> on, on on the thing, and they never really look at them. Um, that's that's presentation, and there is there is that connection between that and leadership because leaders, as you say, leaders don't use powerpoints. Well, good leaders don't anyway. Um, I've seen a few I've seen a few powerpoints from a few Australian leaders in the past, and uh, um, I guess that speaks volumes. But um, good leaders know their stuff. They, they they have a vision for what it is they want to achieve, and they go out and they explain to people how they think the vision can be achieved, but letting, leaving big enough gaps for individuals to be able to fill in because they don't want, they don't set the plan, they don't set the, you know, the detailed blueprint of everything down, you know, where everything connects up and where the water comes in and where the electricity comes and the rest of what they do is they lay out a, a large scale plan and say, you, you know, this is how I see it. And now they call on everybody to contribute, like you say, with JFK and the, and the space program. He called all the, all the experts together and say, I'll make it happen. Um, you know, did he know how to fly, make a rocket that would fly to the moon and keep people alive? No, he didn't. But he had a vision, and he was able to communicate that vision. And, and communication, having having that vision, and being able to communicate that vision in the form of a story, and without those 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 aids, you know, uh, that, that too many people in business fall back on. I think that is key to to uh, great leadership in our day, irrespective of what level of leadership we talk about. At all all different levels, um, from from small business through to enterprise through to governments and, and, and churches and other organisations. Yeah, it, uh, what what you do by storytelling is nothing else but painting an image. You 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 can give them a. A vision for the uh, what what Dr. P basically did in 1993. He, he comes to Volkswagen and Volkswagen the Volkswagen Group is yeah basically broke. Uh, they were still kind of in denial, uh, but uh, we were broke. That was just uh, the fact of it. And what does this guy do? Uh, he goes and stands in front of thousands of workers at uh, at the headquarters and talks about it. And first and foremost, and he made this very clear. He said. I, as a leader, have to tell you the truth. And he told them the truth. What was this about? And, and, and explained it in, in actually in very vivid pictures what it means when you have a break even point beyond 100%, what that really means. He, he brought up some, 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 some great analogies. And uh, then uh, he also said what this now means. He said, basically, if we don't do anything right now, I have to lay off between 35 to 40,000 people of you guys here. So uh, that was that, that he was so truthful about the situation. That was good. But then he said, actually, I do not want to fire anybody. 
So what I encourage is, can we come up with a plan that maybe each one of us is sacrificing something so that we can keep you guys on board? Because I do not want to use your uh, to, to lose your knowledge or to, to, to lose your know-how. I want to keep that on board. The question is, can we find a way? And, mm. and with, with that speech, and, and, and then he, from that he said, let's look 20 years ahead. I tell you how I see Volkswagen in 20 years from now. And that was 1993, so basically today. And he was talking about Volkswagen being in the top three worldwide, Volkswagen being profitable, Volkswagen being uh, represented in the luxury segments, in the sports segments. And so he was talking about all that and what kind of engines we would have. And and people were just amazed. They were mesmerized. They were they, they were kind of glued to his lips. What, uh, and, and he's not a good talker. He's not a good talker, but he's a typical engineer. But the way he talked it, you could see, you could see his emotion coming up, that he loves what he does, and and you began to believe him. And it was at that moment, it was just a story. We had no facts on the table, but we we now knew, okay, that's where he wants to go. He's looking twenty years ahead, and he said very clearly, the way we are building cars at Volkswagen is no way. Uh, we need to change everything. We need to look into everything. We need to look into the complexity of production, which we already did. And we need to to address the problems of the product development process. How do we do that? And, and he mentioned several things and talked about modular structures, uh, which we didn't have uh, back then. And based on that, the turnaround was started. Because now people, they, they understood Actually, the workers understood better his plans than some people, uh, some some higher-ranking people, because when 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 he said I, I want to go into the luxury segment, then uh, somebody told him, uh, well, we have Audi for that, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and he said, yeah, we have Audi for that, but Volkswagen needs to be in the luxury segment as well. Not that there's another car needed in the luxury segment. I think yes, but not necessarily. But only when you are in the luxury segment and do that, you learn quality and you you bring in stuff what you what then trickles down to uh, to uh, mid-sized cars, small cars, what we can use. Yeah, and he, he, had, he had this plan, and uh, you should have seen them when he when uh, when when he mentioned it. Uh, I, th I think it was a year later when he said he's going to buy Bugatti. And everyone said. <laughs> How does it fit? But he had his long-term vision. It, it's a perfect fit if you now look uh, uh, at the setup. And it all started with a story. Yeah, and that, they're, they're great examples as well, you know, um, of, of, of uh, you know, using the luxury car luxury car to then add quality to lower things. I think Toyota and their brand Lexus did that very successfully, but I think Volkswagen is probably one of the more, well, I think, don't think people immediately think of that. But uh, as 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 an example of, of of luxury trickling down, but I think it's probably one of the more successful success stories out there. And what's important about that whole thing is the way that the doctor actually explained it to his people and got their buy-in. Because you know, as a leader, one of the one of the key things you need from your people is you need buy-in. You can have a vision, and if you're explaining your vision and no one's listening and no one's saying, "Yeah, hey, I, I get that, and I want to, I want to be part of that." Then, then you you don't you don't really you're not a leader. You're you're just standing on a street corner or a soapbox and hoping the sun poor bass is going to take sympathy on you and and uh, and listen to what yeah. you have have to say. Uh, so you need to get by, and that's what he what he did. And, um, it's it's interesting that it's it's, it's an interesting phenomena. I think that the people on the work floor buy into that that sort of thing faster. And I've seen this happen quite a lot of times. Well, they buy into that sort of vision faster than the people in the boardroom, and you'd expect it to be the other way around. Um, not too sure why that is. Possibly uh, insecurity, possibly competition, uh, competitive mindset, or whatever. But as opposed to, hey, let's all go out and make this happen, which is more a workflow thing. But uh, um, what, are you, what are your thoughts there? Well, uh, you, you mentioned right now the board not really buying in, and, and that's true. They didn't buy in, but this board at that day was no longer the board by the end of the year. He actually fired everybody. Uh, that was uh, um, I, I, I never saw that. Uh, it, it was incredible. I think uh, in the first year he fired the fifty top people and replaced them by other people, because wow. uh, 
what what he could not stand is when you when you tell him it's impossible. That's basically uh, uh, your resignation letter. Uh, you 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 better leave them. He once told a guy. He said nothing is impossible. Uh, everything can be done. We might have maybe a, a monetary issue for a moment, but don't tell me it's impossible. Make it happen. Yep. So that was uh, that. That was his approach, and uh, uh, he changed all these uh, all these leaders uh, or so-called leaders we uh, we had there in charge. And the interesting thing is, you know Germany, and in Germany we have unions, and the unions are strong. And when he arrived, the unions had kind of a position. Okay, let's see what uh, with what he's coming up with, because if not, we are going into the trenches. But then he basically invited them. And they understood that he wanted to work with them, not against them. And uh, they understood the story, and, and, and there's all the possibilities. And of course, the union sees, oh, there's a, a number of jobs coming along, and he doesn't want to fire people. He want, so he basically was, was running into open doors at the union, and suddenly there was no problem anymore with them. Mm. And all that, all that with the story and, and with the picture he was able to paint. And actually, you know what, mate? What we've just done today is a great example of storytelling to demonstrate what it is you want to achieve. Um, you know, I, I know from our talks we've had, you have an immense, an immense library of stories that you can tell people which demonstrate great leadership. And this is just one of them which demonstrates the, actually the art of storytelling, which you've just done very eloquently through telling a story about, uh, about Volkswagen, why... This is such a powerful medium, and why it's, it's so important as a leader to to harness your experience, convert that into a story which which uh, resonates with people, which gets which gets puts your message across in a way where people are going to buy into them, and then through which you're going to gain influence over them and the other people beyond them, because then they're going to come and they're going to rally and they're going to support your vision and they're going to do everything they can, put all their effort and all their experience and all their talents into achieving whatever it is that vision is. Yes, exactly. That's a uh, that is the point. Uh, human beings, human beings are driven uh, driven by emotions. There's there's several levels. I don't want to go right now into into psychology and neuroscience and and, and stuff. But there's several levels, and uh, you even you even can see it when somebody buys a car. The person buys a car, comes to you, and gives you I don't know fifty facts why this was the right choice. But the facts come actually after the buy. Before that, what do they do? Especially men, when they come, okay, uh, uh, what, what we call in product marketing, the car needs to be black. It needs to have huge wheels. It needs to be white, huge engine, everything that, that basically, uh, that basically is, is causing emotion in you. And I, I, another story with, uh, with this Dr. Pierre. Uh, at some point, we said, uh, because he was into engine design as well, uh, an American would tell you, why do you do engine design? We don't open up the hood. Well, in Germany, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so he was into engine design, and uh, almost like Steve Jobs as well with his computers. If you open up an Apple computer, it looks beautiful. You, you could also create a mess, but it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was the engine, a VR6 engine uh, in, a, in, a, in a Golf GTI sitting there, and product marketing, my boss and I, we wanted to have red cables instead of the black ones. So, of course, you can imagine manufacturing comes up, now these idiots want red cables, a another part we have in production, don't, you know, can't be done, this and that. And Dr. P himself wanted to see it. He comes over, sees the car with the red cables, and huge discussion breaks out. And then he asks me and uh, and uh, and my boss, "Why do you want red cables?" And I look at my boss, and uh, he looks at me, and then he says to uh, to Dr. P, "Dr. P, I want red cables because these red cables make me pee in my pants." <laughs> and and, and P starts starts laughing and said. Okay, guys, you get the red cables. You have to pay for it, but you get the red cables. Ah. <laughs> there is no rationale behind a red cable, but there's a story behind it. Yep. Yep. So, and, and, and that's actually what, what, what resonates with people. Stories. Totally. Uh, they, totally they have already, we all have a tough life, tough and rough uh, from, from, from time to time. So uh, bring some magic into the life of people. Tell them stories.
Beautiful. Mate, love it. And I think with that, what we're going to do is we're already also out of time. I think that was a brilliant, uh, brilliant session and great advice for people. So if anyone wants to find out more about how to, uh, how to become a great leader, uh, how to tell great stories and, uh, and all the other uh, attributes that go with great leadership, you need to uh, connect with Walter on G+. Uh, his uh, details will be at the bottom of the video, wherever you're watching this. And we'll be back here next week, uh, same time, same place, Wednesday, 9 a.m. City time. What time is it over where you are, Walter? What time is it, Palo Alto, at the moment? Right, right now, it's uh, 4.24 in the afternoon. So, 4 p.m. Uh, Palo Alto time and 9, 9 a.m. Uh, yeah, Sydney, exactly. Australia time. And we'll leave it to you to figure out what the rest of that is. Mate, you have a great day. Thanks very much for your time. Any, any closing thoughts otherwise? Uh, well, uh, let, let, let me just add one, one more phrase. What, what's important is get their attention to the stories. Connect and tap into their feelings and make them feel the magic. Love it. Goes to show why you are who you are, mate. Thank you so much for that thought. Have a great day and um, we'll talk again soon, man. Yeah, we will. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.